This is a video on fundamental forces. It can be found in topic seven of the IB physics syllabus. It covers part of 7.1 and 7.3. Take a moment to read the success criteria for this video. Okay, so let's take a look at this chart here. So what are the forces that are holding the nucleus together? So there's four different fundamental forces we typically talk about. And I have them written here in columns from the strongest to the weakest. So the strong force, obviously the strongest. Um, but some people forget that the gravitational force is actually the weakest. So let's start there with the force due to gravity. So why does this occur? Well, it's going to be between two particles due to their mass. In comparison to the others, it's quite small and it has an inverse range. Remember that it is an inverse square law if we look at Newton's universal law of gravitation, F equals capital G M1 M2 over R squared. Okay, so now let's talk about the weak force. Now this is going to be happening typically in the nucleus. It counts for the beta decay and if you haven't done 7.3 particle physics, then you might not realize about it yet, but go back and check when you do. We're talking about the exchange bosons of the um, Z and W plus and W minus bosons. It's the only one that is going to involve a change in charge and also has a change in quark flavor. Mm. Notice it says a short distance. That's because we're actually exchanging a boson. Whereas the force due to gravity, we've got the gravity and like the photon, it's actually going to have an infinite distance. So the electromagnetic force, it also has an infinite range. It's stronger than the other two, but still not as strong as a strong force. So the strong force inside the nucleus, it's one that holds the quarks together as well as the nuclei as in keeping the protons, which are all positive, so close together. And it's extremely strong, but it's a very short distance. That's why if we have too many neutrons in the nucleus, it will start to become unstable. Or likewise, if we don't have enough. So some of you might be thinking I've made a mistake calling it the electromagnetic force and really why didn't I call it the electrostatic force? And there are differences between the two. So electrostatic force we've always talked about is the difference between or the effect of having two charges, you know, repulsion or attraction. But we know that if charges move and you do this in topic five, moving charges create a magnetic field. And so they have a lot more things going on than just whether they're positive or negative. So if I use the phrase electromagnetic force, I'm actually referring to not just the positive and negatives, that's the electrostatic part, but also any additional things of magnetic fields or how they're going to interact. It's a much more general term. Now, this is the chart that's actually in our data booklet. It's really great because it has the forces listed at the top. So you never have to worry like, oh, I can't remember what those fundamental forces are. But in this case, notice that we've got the weakest one first. And then the strongest one is at the end. I really like this chart because it means that we're not here just to memorize of what these particles and how they interact. It's about, can you apply it? So gravitational forces that we were just talking about, what kind of things does that act upon? Well, you can see it acts upon all of them. And how do I get a mediating particle? Well, it would be the graviton. The weak particle I already mentioned works on quarks and leptons. It's the only one that could be involved with a change in quark. And the boson that they're going to transfer back and forth will be these ones. The electromagnetic forces only are going to be acting on particles that have a charge, the exchange boson being a photon. And then, as we've said, the strong force 
its exchange particles the gluon, holding them all close together. So that's just a quick video to help you with the different fundamental forces, their relative strengths, where you can find it in the data booklet to help you out, as well as the particle physics side about the mediating particle that's going to help us with the different forces. I hope that this has helped you out.